What's going on guys, Brian's here. Today is Friday, September 9th, 2022, and the market is closed. Iron condors are very popular options, income trading strategy known to options traders. It's something I don't believe I've talked about exclusively on this channel yet. I just wanna make sure to let you guys know everything that I'm talking about in this video is completely my opinion as I'm by no means an expert iron condor trader. However, I do trade them from time to time and I want to show you guys one of the reasons why I don't trade what can be considered a traditional iron condor, which I think is very subjective. When I say traditional iron condor, I'm referring to shorting any type of iron condor that has a call delta below low 15 closer to 10 or 11.11 and shorting a put that has a negative delta around negative 15 negative 0.15 if you're an avid follower of the tasty works youtube channel you've probably seen them talk about different iron condor strategies out there but i like to make my iron condors a little bit tighter meaning i will usually short strikes that are a little bit closer to the current spot price because i'm looking to bring in a little bit more premium now if you don't know what an iron condor is i'm surprised you'd be watching this video but just in case you've never seen an iron condor, I just want to I just want to mention the basics of what it is. It's just a combination of two vertical spreads. So you're shorting a call strike and then you're buying a call further out as a protection from the one you're shorting. And then you're also shorting a put option and then you're buying another put option further out as protection on this one. And then the combination of these two vertical spreads right here. So this would be considered a call credit spread and this is a put credit spread. When you combine the both of them together, you get an iron condor, sometimes abbreviated as just an IC. And you're profiting on time decay by being long theta. So that means as long as the price stays between your strike prices that you've shorted, you'd profit. You don't need to hold the strategy until expiration. You just needed to stay within your zones for a certain amount of time and that's how you profit and what you're essentially doing is selling these options and collecting a premium so by selling them it's it falls under the category of a credit spread and then you're looking to buy back the iron condor at a cheaper price so in other words if i sell someone an iron condor for nine bucks that means i've collected nine hundred dollars in credit and then i might be looking to buy back the iron condor for a cheaper price when it's maybe going for negative seven dollars and then i'll be buying it back from them for essentially seven hundred bucks and the difference between the two is 200 bucks and that would mean that's how much I've profit on this particular iron condor hypothetically speaking now if you have any experience with credit spreads you know you'll generally need to put up a decent amount of capital to receive a small amount of profits relatively speaking the reason we run strategies like this is because the probability of success is generally much higher than picking a direction and as long as you know how to manage the trade you end up never really taking on the max loss of course unless you hold it into expiration which is not something that's suggested. If we were to build an iron condor right now, what I have on the chart is just very key uh, resistance and support levels. So this is the most recent strong resistance level up here on the SPX. So this is the SPX daily time frame which is 4,325 and down right here, we have 3,720 as the most recent very strong support. So if we were looking to run an iron condor, we might look at a chart, which is one way some people do it, but it's not the way that I think most professionals approach iron condors. They're generally looking at the deltas of these positions, but let's just say we were to run an iron condor. We think the SPX is going to stay within this range over the next couple of weeks. We can say maybe we'll sell this strike price up here and then we'll buy this strike price up here because we're thinking if price does go up to here, it's likely to reach some sort of resistance and then price will be rejected and it'll come back down. The only two indicators on the chart right now are this simple moving average, which is this 50 simple moving average. And then we have the 200 daily moving average or the simple moving average up there. And as a trader, you might speculate that maybe if price got back up to the 200 day moving average, it might reject just like it happens back here. This was a great short trade. And if price was to get back up to the 200 day moving average, you might tell yourself it will probably reject and come back to right here. Now the market tends to consolidate more than it trends. This is 2022 so things have been very volatile and we have been getting some very strong short-term trends right here this is a very aggressive move up just like this was a very aggressive move down and this was also a very aggressive move up and this is a very aggressive move down so things have been very volatile this year if we just zoom out for a second we can see that's not a normal market considering how wide these ranges have been if we look back here we can see that this even was not necessarily a normal market but in recent times since the crash of covid covid we can see we've been a strong uptrend but even during this uptrend we can see we only were dealing with a couple very aggressive uh, pullbacks here 
And generally, even when price pulls back, it tends to cho be choppy and it tends to consolidate on its way down. It's very rarely going to do this type of price action here. And this is what makes it a little bit scary for a year like this, considering the type of drops we've been having, as well as the bear market rallies that we've also been having. So trading iron condos this year, it makes sense if you're new to this and you've tried it and you failed because it's very difficult this year. Because even if we zoom back to this to uh, last year, we can see if you ran an iron condor, maybe around a day like this, which probably wouldn't have been a good day to run one anyway, you can see about a month and a half later price was right back to where the spot price was and then the same thing here if you run an iron condor here we can see price kind of came back to it if you ran an iron condor here we can see price kind of came back to that uh, strike price right there but if we zoom out the same thing has in a sense been happening so let's just say you decided to run an iron condor here yes price did come back to it but you'd have to deal with a very violent negative pnl while all of this has happened while you wait for a price to come back to within your uh, iron condor or with or return to the spot price in which you open the iron condor so what we have on the chart this we're going to go over a couple examples one is what i'm going to label a standard iron condor and then one is going to be one that's a little bit tighter and it's more so the type of iron condors that i run using different approaches i might look at gamma exposure or i might look at other key technical levels or quantitative levels to decide which are going to be my short strikes so as we remember these strike prices right here let's look at the options chain and another thing you will generally want to do is go further out in time so it's suggested to go maybe 35 days as a minimum as your expiration if you're looking to swing trade income based iron condors because you'll the whole point of why we run these again is for consistency you'll win a lot more than you lose so as long as you have proper risk management in place and you know how to defend them you'll end up with a positive expectancy at the end of the year but instead of using 35 day sell expiration i like to pay attention to just the monthly expirations right here so we've already passed this expiration right here has not necessarily passed it but it's too soon it's the six it's only six days till expiration so i like to jump out to the following month and we're going to use the am expiration right here just because it tends to be a little bit more liquidity if you're looking to trade the options well in advance. So 41 days till expiration, we'll drop this down right here. And if we take a look at the deltas, this is this column right here, we can see that this is a negative 15 delta. So this would be our short strike in which we're going to use for this hypothetical example. And if we scroll all the way down to the call side and we were to decide to use something like a point 11 delta, we can see that we have the 43. We can see that we have the 4,390. If we come back to the chart, we can see 4,390 puts us all the way up here. So well past our resistance level. And if we scroll back up here and we take a look at our uh, negative 15 delta on the put side, we see we have 3,745. So that puts us right around here. So a little bit above the uh, support and that's only just because the market has been up for the past couple of days but it, let's just say we opened something like this yesterday the deltas wouldn't have been that different and it probably would have coincided with this massive resistance and this massive potential support so potential resistance potential support because we don't know yet until price gets up to that level and then rejects can we actually label it as resistance i went ahead and mocked up that iron condor so this is the call strike that we mentioned so again shorting the 4390 and the delta on that position is about 0 0.11 0 0.12 or so and if we scroll down here, we can see that this is the short put in which we were just talking about. So having a delta of uh, 0.15. And this is what our iron condor would look like. As we take a look at the Greeks, we can see it has a slightly negative delta, which is something you generally want to do when you're running an iron condor to give yourself a little bit of a buffer because the iron condor is a short Vega trade, which means you benefit from a decrease in implied volatility. And generally implied volatility increases whenever the market's pulling back. So in this case, if the market was to pull back, you're going to benefit from making it start off as a negative delta position. And that in theory should counter the increase in implied volatility, which is hurting you because your short vega what you're getting paid from is the theta or the time decay in this case so right now this is saying that it has a time decay option strat which is my favorite platform aside from obviously the thinkorswim risk profile but my favorite platform for analyzing a trade very quickly it's multiplying it by 100 so it's doing the math for us right now and it's saying that the theta in this case is about 12 bucks so that's essentially how much this spread will pocket every day again not accounting for implied volatility and also not accounting for the delta if it was in a vacuum and the only thing that mattered was time decay then this is how much this strategy would make per day if we take a look at how much capital this is required we see we need about almost two thousand dollars and we're collecting about five hundred and fifty dollars in credit and one thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars in terms of collateral or how much margin you're going to uh, need the max amount of profit you can make on a trade like this is the credit received now what's often taught or what's often mentioned is you should look for about 25 percent return on your credit as a profit target because all the studies all the guys that have been doing this for a couple decades have a lot more experience than i have especially running 
Burning Iron Condors. They've all taught that looking for about 25% on profit from all their back testing over, I don't know, 10 to 15 years of research has shown 25% return on credit is a good expectancy to have if you're looking for consistency because you'll free up your capital and then you're able to run multiple of these iron condos throughout the year and then you're not holding all the way until expiration it ends up not being worth it for the extra 75 percent that you're going to make you have to deal with a lot more fluctuations in price and a lot more fluctuations in your p l 25 percent return on credit usually ends up being between 7 to 10 percent return on your capital or return on margin so roc as you can abbreviate it return on capital 7 to 10 percent is pretty good considering you're probably going to need to be in these type of trades usually about 8 to uh in my experience 8 to 16 days is usually how long the whole time would be again that's the averages and just with my personal experiences for purposes of this video, this is what I'm going to label as a standard iron condor. You can see that the credit received is much less than how much margin you need. This has much higher probability of profit because of how wide the strikes are, the short strikes are. It's well past the one standard deviation and it's well past the major resistance levels on the chart. As mentioned before, iron condor traders are not necessarily looking at support and resistance on the charts or if they label themselves a purist, they're paying attention to the deltas and they're also managing their positions based on their deltas. This just happens to coincide with our potential resistance and support on our chart. I want to switch over to an iron condor that was opened last week, Monday, which would be this one right here. And we're going to call this the standard iron condor opened on this day. So this was last week, Monday. We're now dealing with a Friday. So 10 trading days or nine trading days later as Monday was a holiday. The reason this one is being called the standard iron condor is because this short call strike up here had a delta of 0.10 and then the short put down here at the time in which this was open had a negative delta of 0.15. Now puts are generally higher in delta just because of the fact that there's usually a skew between calls and puts and that's for a variety of reasons but one way to keep it simple is people are willing to pay a premium to purchase insurance on their portfolios or hedge funds or anybody or most long-term investors or market participants are willing to pay that extra premium. So a put is generally going to be more expensive which means you're going to collect a little bit more premium from selling puts versus is selling calls and that's just because again more people are interested in actually buying insurance or buying puts let's jump over to option strat and now we're taking a look at the risk profile for that iron condor and in this case when it was open it was 53 days till expiration it was using the october pm expiration spx options right here october 21st monthly pm expiration and at the time it was open we can see that the put delta was 0.16 so not 0 0.15 0 0.16 in this case and then we can see that the call delta is 0.10 a little bit wider than what some might suggest some might say use a put delta of 0.15 and use a call delta of 0.11 others might say use a put delta of 0.16 and then use a call delta of maybe 0.12 again there's so many different ways and everyone has their own particular strategy but for purposes of this video i'm keeping this close to a point 15 and then this close to about a 0.10 or 0.11 delta and we can see right here the credit received was about 685 dollars and it required 2315 dollars in margin and at the time this was well past an expected implied move or one standard deviation move by this expiration and we can see that it was open on august 29th 2 19 p.m eastern time the implied volatility at the time was 23%, according to how option strat calculates this implied volatility. But we can see right now that the implied volatility has come down about 1%. So it's currently at 22%, which is good for an iron condor. Right now, currently it's up 30%. And the way option strat calculates is, is saying it's 30% on the credits. So not 30% of your margin. Again, 30% of the credit puts it, puts it up about $205. The iron condor that I'm going to call as non-standard, I'm going to switch over to that right here, is the iron condor condor that I generally run. Again, it's not based on Delta. It's a little bit biased. It's a little bit, I enter, I put in a little bit of discretion, which is something that you probably don't want to do when you're trading iron condors. Again, it's meant to be non-discretionary. It's meant to be an income-based strategy, which means you don't care if the market goes up or down. You're just following your rules. And then and over the long run, as long as you follow the rules and pay attention to your Deltas, you're going to end up making money. In this case, I was more interested with shorting the 4250 strike and then shorting the 3800 strike. So it was a little bit inside of the support here and a little bit inside of the resistance here. The reason I was interested in doing this is just because of the gamma exposure as well as a few other reasons when I was looking to enter the trade. I did not think the market was actually going to go down to 3800 and at least not back here. And if it did go down to 3800, I was expecting implied volatility to decrease and then the market would actually reverse. 
And one thing that's pretty neat for iron condors is if price comes, price will generally come back to the spot price within two to three weeks. Again, during normal market conditions, you can kind of almost expect that to happen. It's just how much pain are you going to have to deal with before that happens. It's also good running iron condors whenever implied volatility spikes up. And we can see that implied volatility was spiking up because the market had pulled back aggressively from a pair. So that's why right around this week here, iron condors were very appealing because it's a strategy you want to run when implied volatility spikes because you're short vega. And if you're short vega, again, that means you're benefiting when the implied volatility decreases. And that's something that's pretty much always going to happen whenever there's a spike in ply volatility it's going to decrease so you want to keep iron condors in your toolkit to run whenever implied volatility spikes now let's take a look at the risk profile for this iron condor and here it is the same expiration the 21st and the short call is 4250 and the short put is 3800 right here we can see a lot more credit was bought in just from bringing the strike prices in a little bit tighter and regarding the margin being used, it's a little bit more margin than the other one. So this is 2,800 bucks. And then over here, it's about 20, 2,300 bucks. So a little bit more margin, but you're collecting a lot more collateral compared to how much you're receiving from running a standard iron condor. And that's just because the premium you're collecting from selling a put and selling a call that's closer to the spot price, it means you're bringing in so much more premium, which, which increases how much credit you're receiving when you first sell the iron condor. As we can see right now, this iron condor is currently up 20%. Again, the market is closed, so these numbers are not fluctuating right now. We can see this is up $425, and this one is up $205. And as mentioned before, these iron condors are opened last week, Monday. Right away, as we compare the PL between both of these right now, we can see that obviously the non standard iron condor has produced a much greater results when we're looking at it, or, or at least when we're just comparing the PL. So, almost twice as much as the standard iron condor. As we can see right here, about 200 bucks and 400 bucks. Both of these were open up right around the same time. So, this is at 225 again Eastern time, and this is at 219 Eastern time right here. So, within, within 10 minutes of each other. And this was also on a Monday. Now, obviously, this is just one case, and it's by no means a sample set of a thousand trades over years and years of data. I'm just sharing, again, my personal experience between different iron condors and why I prefer one way over another. If you have some sort of an edge, I don't necessarily see the reason why not adjust your iron condors or maybe pull them in a little bit to create a little bit more credit for yourself if you have some sort of an edge on the chart or you're willing to accept the fact that you're going to have a lower probability of success. Because again, the tighter you make your iron condors, obviously the higher likelihood it is of your short strikes getting touched certain people make adjustments once their short strike once their short strike is touched other people make adjustments when their deltas change other people hold it until expirations some people will wait for their long strikes to get broken before they decide to do something again there's so many different ways to trade and there's so many different ways to trade iron condor specifically something i forgot to mention if we take a look at this right here i forgot to log the deltas but the put delta was negative 0.24 and the call delta i believe was about 0.28 so i shorted a call that had a little bit higher delta now something worth mentioning is that the deltas are also used as a proxy as a probability of this strike price expiring in the money so in this case the fact that this put is a delta of 0.15 that means it has about an 85 percent chance of being outside the money at expiration some people like to look at that and say okay with an 85 percent chance it creates a higher odds versus if you were to sell say for example this put if you sell this put right here it means it has a 70 percent chance that it's going to be outside of the money and if you're selling a put it means you don't want it to go in the money so it has significantly less probability of success than selling this one all the way out here the trade-off is that you're receiving almost almost no credit for so by selling this put you're only getting about 30 bucks and if you're selling this put all the way down here you're getting $64 so you're getting two times as much money by selling this put but obviously you have a lower odds of the trade working out in your favor so that's obviously the trade-off as in anything with trading not everything is going to be 100% and not everything is going to be easy everything has some sort of a trade-off coming around to the conclusion of this video I'm just going to show you guys again this is the non-standard iron condor and this would be what can be considered a standard iron condor and then I want to show you guys the PL as we look through time so this right here was a few days ago so this was Tuesday right before the market opened so eight days after the iron condor was open this would be the non-standard iron condor and we can see that a few days later so eight Eight days later which is great it was the return was about 16 percent on credit right here and at the same time this iron condor again these screenshots were taken 15 minutes before the market opened we can see that this one was only up 13 percent so a little bit over a week later you're already hitting a much better return in this case here and then all the way this is now uh thursday 
right after the market opened. So yesterday, 10 days later, this is now hitting 17%. This would be the standard iron condor and this would be the non-standard iron condor. So bringing in a little bit more credit, we can see that this one is already hitting pretty much what would be considered a profit target. As we look at them currently, we can see 20% return right here. And then this one is currently at 30%. So if you're following the rules, you'll pretty much be closing this iron condor out already because it's hit 25% return on credit and it's currently up over eight or 9% or so on margin. If you're trading an iron condor like this one, you don't need to hold all the way for the 25% return because a 20% of credit in this case ends up being about 15% on margin. So you're well past the 10% target that you would generally have when you're, whenever you're looking to run some sort of credit spread like this, which means this trade would have been closed yesterday, even though it's just 20% of credit. And this trade you would have probably had to hold also until yesterday as the actual profit target was closer to about 180 bucks, if I believe. Lastly, I just wanna show you guys the drawdown or the PL as these trades were open and if we take a look at the standard iron condor this right here is probably my last reason for why i prefer to trade the other one as we can see that it ends up being pretty flat for a while and as it took a while in this case for the pnl to actually start showing in comparison to this one right here we can see that the pnl yes it had a little bit of a drawdown also as most iron condors will have when you first open them but then we can see that the pnl this was well within profit much longer and it's just been an easier hold holding something like this tends to be a little bit difficult and that's something that's important what i don't think is often discussed that much yes if the end let's just say at the end of the day this trade ends up pulling in 600 bucks but you have to be down 1800 bucks to to actually uh, see that 600 dollars in profit that's not really a trade that i want to be in personally and that's my main reason for trading the other one psychologically it's probably because i didn't start off trading credit spreads when i first started trading options it's something i learned a little bit later and as mentioned previously i'm by no means an iron condor expert so i still have a little bit of the residuals when it comes to momentum based trading and thinking about, hey, I want to risk a dollar to make three or I want to risk a dollar to make at least two. Sometimes I'm looking for to risk a dollar to make even all the way up to six dollars or so if I'm trading something really far out the money. I'm still coming from this risk reward type of mentality and it's still taking me time. Even though I've run quite a few iron condors over the past two years, it's still if I see something that, yes, you can risk uh, $3 to make one, if you have an 80% probability of success, and then you know when to cut the trade when it goes wrong or manage it, you're going to end up making money. This right here, I still struggle with. And in this case, sometimes you're risking $4 to make one, which is why you want to cut it maybe if you're down $2 if you're only looking to make one because you need to have a win rate that's pretty high so it's just come down so just so at the end of the day it comes down to a personality thing i was just hoping to share i was just hoping to share some of my thoughts as well as sometimes my iron condors are very discretionary which they're not intended to be sometimes my iron condors tend to be a little bit weird you might see i might run an iron condor or i might talk about one in the future where maybe i might short the 400 the 4200 call and then I might short the 3800 3, put. And it's just because I'm actually thinking that the price is going to probably stall out maybe around here and pull back. And then I run, I might run some sort of calendar around here to counter my uh, delta as we're running up. Again, there's so many creative ways to run these trades. And that's one of the things I love about options trading. There's not particular, there's not one way to do any of these things. It all comes down to what works for you, what makes it easy to hold as you're waiting for your profit targets to hit. If I know I can hit my profit target within 14 days, that's something Thing that i'll really look forward to especially if it means within that 14 days i don't have to see much red it just makes me a little bit more comfortable and then it also makes it easier for me to hold because i'm thinking about this at the beginning if sir so, so if you're holding the standard iron condor and let's just say you're in a few lots because generally you're running a, a, at least a few lots I, I if you're thinking about 10k in capital and again you're looking to make some sort of uh, income off of this this right here makes me nervous because the whole time I'm like, okay, I know I have a lot of margin out there and I know I have a high probability of success and I know I'm going to hit my profit target, but I can't shake sometimes thinking about this. I at least I still haven't outgrown that phase yet. And if we take a look at this one and we have the same almost 10K in capital being used, so let's just say three to keep it pretty fair under 10K, this makes it a little bit easier for me to hold because I'm telling myself at least I still have a chance to pull in a lot more uh, cap a lot more profit than I'm looking to make from the other one, even though it's just an illusion. It just makes me feel better and it makes me trade it better. So, so those are my thoughts. If you wanna see me talk a little bit more about iron condors and other different types of credit spreads that there are out there on this channel, because I do trade them, let me know in the comments down below. Like the video if you learned something. And if you have any feedback for me, I'd love to hear it. If you have a lot more experience running iron condors and maybe there's something that you have some sort of an edge with, I would love to hear it. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next one.